Hey team, and thanks so much for joining me for today's session. Today I'm going to introduce you to Tinkercad. This is an online software that allows individuals to work with engineering design strategies. And right now I'm using the strategy to get into a class. So I'm pretending that I'm a student. I'm going to make the assumption that your teacher has provided you a link inside Google Classroom. And from here, Follow your teacher's leadership. Your teacher will either ask you to join with a nickname or to use the Google button down below. So listen to your teacher's leadership and then use the strategy that your teacher has provided for you. For right now, I'm going to join with a nickname. If your teacher has asked you to join with a nickname, then use this strategy. If not, authenticate with Google below. Lexi Brown is not a real student. I'm just, I just made that name up for the purpose of teaching. And after authenticating, it takes me into this space. I have three models that are sitting right here because I've worked in here before. If you have never worked inside Tinkercad before, it's not going to show you any models that are waiting for you. But in order to create a brand new model for the very first time, you can click right here where it says create new design. Click one time. In the course of today's lesson, I am using a wireless mouse and I know that not everyone has access to a wireless mouse and quite frankly, it doesn't have to be wireless. It can be plugged into your computer specifically. However, there are some features on a mouse that are different from a trackpad. There are characteristics that I'm going to explain to you that are specific to how a mouse functions and then I'm gonna to try to duplicate those same strategies without a mouse as well. All right, team, let me first introduce you to the resources that we have on this right-hand side. In Tinkercad, for the most part, you are going to drag shapes over that you see on this right-hand side. In future lessons, I will explore more advanced skills and resources, but it's essential that I start out with the basics. You have more than one menu available here. Explore those if you wish. For right now, I'm going to stay inside basic shapes. And in order to bring a shape into your work plane, you are going to click and then you are going to drag that over and then let go. Click on a shape, drag it, and then let go. For right now, let's explore the process of changing the size of this specific shape. Now this fantastic box right here may or may not be in your way. You can actually use these little bubbles right here in order to alter or change the shape that you're working with. If that box disappears because you click over here in this white space, all you need to do is click one more time for that shape to reappear and you can use these sliders in order to adjust the size of your shape. Here are a few other ways that you can do that. I'm going to scoot my mouse over here and you can see this corner white box right here. And then I'm gonna scoot over here. I'm only focusing on the white ones. There's this one right here. You have this one right here, this one over here, and then this one down here. If you use your index finger on your mouse and you leave your index finger down and then you scoot in and out, you can change the shape using that specific corner. So you'll notice how I hover on the box and it turns red. The computer let me know that I chose that specific corner to adjust. And you'll notice how the shape significantly changes. So that's another way that I can change the size of the shape. I also, when I hover on this box and it turns red, you'll notice how I have this it keeps disappearing on me, sorry about that. You'll notice how I have this box right here and this box over here and it disappeared again. Uh, but you can click on that corner box in order for those to stay there. You can come over to one of these boxes where it has the numeric value and you can use your keyboard in order to type in a value and the shape will move accordingly. And these are millimeters. So they're not feet, it's not inches, they are millimeters. You can also go to a 10th or 100th of a millimeter. So you'll notice 72.47. So if you want 60.23, enter on my keyboard, you'll notice how that adjusts. 
going to take you over to this top white box. This top white box indicates how high that is. So you'll notice that as I move in the up direction, that the shape moves up with me. And when I move in the down position, that the shape moves down with me as well. When I click to make that box red, and I come over here to the box that has the numeric value inside of it, I can click and I can change that value in there, five, zero, enter and it has changed to exactly 50 millimeters. So I've talked about the perimeter uh, boxes and I've also talked about the one on the top. Now, if you click on the cone, the cone is going to raise and lower that shape. So anything below the work plane is not going to print. You can still look at it, but it's not going to print. And then anything that's too high, we're gonna talk about that in future lessons. Um, sometimes that's perfect because it's part of your design and you want it to do that. Other times having it high in the sky is not perfect. I'm gonna use my index finger. I'm gonna to touch the letter D on the keyboard like down. And when I touch the letter D, my shape will rest on the work plane perfectly. In order to move around the object, we have several ways of accomplishing this task. If you head up to the box over here, click with your index finger and leave your index finger down, you can scoot this box around in order to adjust your view of the project you are working on. In order to zoom in or zoom out of your project, you can use the plus button to zoom in. You can use the minus button to zoom out. In order to accomplish these similar tasks, but using the mouse, if you hold the right mouse button down and then adjust your object, you'll notice how the object moves around. So simply using the mouse is one strategy that you can use in order to move around. Additionally, if you hold down the wheel on your mouse and then move your mouse around, you'll notice how you can move your entire project over to the left or over to the right. Lastly, by rotating the wheel in and rotating the wheel out, that also achieves the zoom in and zoom out options. If you have lost track of forward, left, right, and back, you can click on the home button one time and it will flip your project back around to its correct position so you now know what forward and back are. If you zoom quite far away from your project and you would love for it to fill your workspace, this broken square over here on the left will cause it to pop right into this position so you can see your project up tidy. All right, team, if at some point you wish to delete an item that you have on that workspace or that work plane, make sure that you click on that item one time and then press backspace or delete on your keyboard. If you have made a mistake, oh no, I didn't mean to erase that, go ahead and use the undo button located over here on the left. By clicking the undo button, you, whatever you did last will be undone for you. And then you also have the move forward or the redo option located over here as well. You'll notice when I hover on top of this arrow that the black box appears. The black box lets you know that there are keyboard commands that would allow you to perform that same action. Control Z for undo, control Y for redo. All right, friends, that was a very short intro. In order to get you in, thank you so much for paying attention and have a great day.